we want to talk about the opioid uh, crisis that we're having, and it has now been declared a crisis by the president. And Dr. Stephen Barna joins us right now from the Florida Orthopedic Institute. And Dr. Barna, explain the uh, opioid crisis, how this came about. How are you doing? Thanks for having me today. Our pleasure. Well, essentially uh, what happened is probably around the uh, 1990s, there was a declaration that we should have no pain, that we should have uh, as a fifth vital sign that we should measure uh, pain. And so with that, uh, some drug companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies that made opiates lobbied really hard to the government as well as to physicians across the country that we should stamp out pain, particularly chronic non-cancer pain, not just cancer pain or acute pain. And obviously that led to a crisis, which we're trying to deal with now. And I, we've seen it big time here with uh, Attorney General, State Attorney General Pam Bondi. What's been done lately, and what are people using as alternatives to the opioids? Yes, so, yes, so Pam Bondi, I think, is fantastic in what she's done and having all kinds of regulations uh, to cut down. Uh, we've had a prescription drug monitoring program. Uh, so that all doctors can access to see when a patient comes in. And uh, maybe you're thinking about writing an opiate. We can actually see if anywhere in Florida they've received a prescription you know, to avoid doctor shoppers. We also uh, put strict guidelines in for documentation that we must have um, to be, sure, be really thorough in physical exam, even urine drug screening, um, you know, MRI imaging, whatever it is, to make sure that an opiate really is justified and they've really failed other means. As far as alternatives, you know, we at Florida Orthopedic Institute really have a, a lot to offer. Uh, there are many medications that are non-controlled uh, substances that are, are not addicting, uh, are not going to cause addiction. So there are uh, generic drugs and uh, newer drugs out like gabapentin or neurontin or duloxetine or cymbalta, um, various types of muscle relaxants. There's also all kinds of other options, you know, we, we offer it for the Institute, we also offer physical therapy, you can have chiropractic visits, acupuncture is offered as well at other places. So there's really many alternatives. What is the, uh, what is the effect you get from an opioid here if you're using it just as a, a recreational drug? Well, I mean, unfortunately, we see the end result. We have people dying, unfortunately, and, uh, and that's the danger, right? So what happens is that, you know, maybe it's uh, there's, there's some leftover Percocet in mom's medicine cabinet from her hip surgery, and the 16-year-old child grabs one and thinks, oh, it can't be that bad. It's, uh, it's just a harmless prescription pill. And uh, it may be that that particular prescription pill is a very high milligram dosage, and for that child, maybe taking a couple of those causes an overdose death. But or, I think I think Jack's trying to get to what oh, the sorry. feeling. What and am I right, Jack? What yeah, the feeling? Yeah. Why would a, a a young person or a, somebody in their twenties or thirties take a drug? Is it a recreational drug? It's like synthetic heroin, right, Doctor? Exactly right. And that, and that was actually what I was going to next. And then what happens is they get hooked. And then they go to say, well, I need to get more of this stuff because I'm hooked. You know, my body needs this. You know, we will get taught, you know, we will get uh, uh, addicted to it. That's just normal. And so then they go on the street, and I think it's about a dollar a milligram for any type of prescription type drug, or, you know, whereas heroin is really inexpensive. And so unfortunately, that becomes the gateway to heroin, which then is incredibly addictive and, of course, leads to overdose, leads to, you know, hepatitis C, HIV, all kind of horrible things. It was such a positive what happened to cut down on the doctor shopping, but the problem that occurred with is what you're just talking about now is they people couldn't get their prescription pills anymore, and people that thought, I will never touch a needle, they ended up going there to get their fix. It's very sad. Yes, yeah, horrible. Well, Dr. Barna, do you have a website? We do. It's www.floridaortho.com. Good. You don't make them spell out pedic. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> Dr. Barna, thanks for joining us on AM Tampa Bay. On AM Tampa